As of the close on Friday, February 23rd, 2013, we saw a subtle change in the markets this week. Many of the risk-on, risk-off charts that we follow closed on Friday with a risk-off look. The previous four to five weeks, typically what would happen is these charts would have a risk-off look midweek but repair themselves by the close on Friday. This change could be important. And if these charts continue to look as they do as of the close on February 23rd, and they may improve, they may not, but as they sit now, the next five weeks could be very, very difficult for stock market investors from a probability perspective. In this video, we'll quickly look at the risk reward table we reviewed in last week's video. We won't spend a lot of time there at all. And then we'll try to answer the question, can the Fed, who has the printing presses running 24 hours a day, rekindle the wealth effect by reinflating asset prices? The wealth effect, as most of you know, is when your 401k balance, your brokerage balance, the value of your house, your land, any of those things increase, then you feel wealthier, you feel better, you sleep better at night, and you have a tendency to spend money. We'll look at Russia, copper, coal stocks, and materials to try to answer this question. Then we'll review several weekly risk-on versus risk-off charts. You can see the list here. We believe if charts remain in their present condition, that best case scenario, we would see somewhat of a consolidation up and down sideways move in stocks, followed by downside. Consolidation tells you that upside is possible. We could even make a higher high, even under bearish conditions. As always, if the charts improve, which they may, we're more than happy to keep an open mind and continue to look for good risk-reward opportunities. A couple of caveats. If emerging markets can turn and rally, and there's some reason to believe that they might. And if Europe can continue somewhat of a bullish look and make a higher high, it's possible that some of these charts that we will cover, we won't be as concerned about them as we are right now. To view the video in full screen mode, use this icon in the lower right hand corner of your video player. To improve the clarity of the charts, use this icon in the lower right hand corner of your video player. This is a weekly chart of the S&P 500. We'll use it to illustrate a point about patience and risk reward going back to 2010. It required two months of patience to get an excellent risk reward pitch to hit. 2011, poor risk reward required six months of patience to get an excellent pitch to hit. 2012, two months here, again in 2012, two months. The objective is to redeploy your capital when price, the markets, our models, risk reward charts start to tell us in these areas here that our risk reward ratios are improving. This is the table we discussed in detail last week. You can find a detailed description of this table and why it's important at the 145 mark of last week's video, which is entitled Risk Versus Reward Unfavorable in Stocks. You can Google Shivako Capital Channel to find that video. The point is, the coming week, the last week in February, is this week here, meaning the coming week has an even less favorable risk-reward ratio than the previous week. And looking out all the way to the end of March, the risk-reward ratio historically is unfavorable. Can stocks go up? They absolutely can. Is the risk-reward in our favor? No. This is a little bit different look from some of the charts that we review in the past in terms of the concepts. This is the RSX. ETF or the Russia ETF relative to the S&P 500 here. This is the S&P 500. 
point of the exercise, we've got a Fed and global central bankers that are trying to inflate asset prices to recreate the wealth effect. Their belief is that economic growth will follow and eventually confidence and then hiring. If we go back to 2009, Russia, which is a commodity rich and oil rich country, tends to do well when we're confident about future economic outcomes. 2009, the start of a very long term uptrend in stocks. The Fed is printing money here hand over fist. The Fed is printing money here hand over fist. This area here, this is Russia relative to the S&P 500 is somewhat of the transition from a bear market in stocks to a bull market. April of 2009 through August of late August 2009, in this area here, somewhat of a battle was fought, fought between RSX and the S&P 500. Russia eventually won and went up into an uptrend, which was a positive for stocks and the economy. Fast forward today with the Fed printing money hand over fist. In the same general area where Russia won a bullish battle with the S&P 500 and gains in the stock market followed, Russia, at least as of the close on Friday, February 22nd, is now losing that battle. Thought process. Fed is able to create positive asset inflation and the wealth effect above this dotted line, or if you can break out of this general cluster of resistance here. We've been unable to do that recently, which tells us possibly that the deflationary forces are too strong as long as we remain below this line. This chart and some others that follow are concerning for stock market bulls. Similar concept here. Now we're looking at copper, a commodity relative to the S&P 500 here. You can make an argument with Russia. Chris, there's corruption in Russia. They've got a bad economy. You can caveat it, but you really can't do that with copper. None of that really applies to a commodity like copper where there's no corruption or a poor economic system. Same period here. Copper, like Russia, was able to break above this line to the upside in 2009 when the new bull market in stocks began. Notice the momentum for copper relative to the S&P 500 in these areas is very strong. And if I scroll down, when momentum for the ratio of copper to the S&P 500 is strong, this is the stock market. Stocks tend to do well. Strong momentum. S&P 500 does well. Fast forward to the present day and momentum here with Williams percent R looks terrible. There's no other way to phrase that. That is an ugly looking situation. This is an ugly looking situation. The stock market dropped. Ugly looking situation momentum wise. Stock market dropped. This is a yellow flag for stocks and risk in general. And if we look at the ratio itself, instead of breaking above this area here, somewhat confirms that the Fed's able to create asset inflation. We're doing just the opposite. We just broke below this line in a bearish manner here. We also broke below this parallel trend line here. So we've got white space to potentially fill on this chart. When we filled white space here, stock market did poorly. Don't need to spend a lot of time on this chart. It is the exact same concept again. Now it's just coal stocks. 2009, the relative strength in coal, this is 2009, is outstanding. Stock market does well. This is the general battleground here. If I come over, now we're fighting the same battle and coal is losing that battle relative to the S&P 500. Here, we've got strong momentum for coal stocks, strong momentum for coal stocks. 
very tepid momentum for coal stocks. Now we're looking at IYM materials, similar concepts. Back in 2008, you can see support held here, here in 2010, again here, here, and here. All of this occurred, especially these instances, during an uptrend in stocks. Now, what once was support is now acting as resistance. Materials have been unable to get over this hump here, which is a bad sign. Last time we were rejected here at this line, the S&P 500 corrected. We're being rejected again here. It feels like the S&P 500 is levitating and it wants to come down into this area. This chart, like all the charts we'll show today, can improve. It could bounce here. The purpose of showing all of this is, as these charts sit now, they're concerning. If they improve, we're happy to become more bullish and redeploy our capital. But we have to see improvement. This is a weekly chart of the U.S. dollar bullish US dollar ETF with the symbol UUP relative to the S&P 500. This is the ratio here. This is a moving average in blue. This is a moving average in red. This is the S&P 500 weekly up here. When the US dollar is outperforming the S&P 500 as it is here and here, you typically get some type of sideways consolidation in stocks and eventually weakness in stocks. Sideways consolidation in stocks followed by weakness. Consolidation followed by weakness. Here, we bounced at support. The S&P 500 was weak. Here, we bounced at a support line. S&P 500 rolled over. Follow this support line down. Follow this support line down. We bounced in that general area. Sideways weakness. Follow this line down here and this line down here. We're above both and turning up. This period here looks similar to this period here, this period here, and this period here, where weakness in the S&P 500 followed. We may see sideways to down, sideways to down, sideways to down. It's another possible option. Obviously, if this chart rolls over, which we're open to, if it turns back down, that would be bullish for the stock market. As it sits now, this chart is concerning for all risk assets as of the close on February 22nd, 2013. Similar concept to the dollar chart. Now we're looking at utilities, XLU, relative to the S&P 500. And I might note in this video, for the most part, we are looking at price. We are not using a lot of indicators. We're basically looking at supply and demand and desire to own something or the desire to sell something. And more importantly, now we're looking at the desire to own utilities, a defensive asset relative to the desire to own the S&P 500. When the ratio is rising here, utilities are in favor relative to the stock market. The S&P 500 tends to be weak. Here the ratio is consolidating and turning. The stock market consolidates and turns. Consolidating and turning. Consolidating, turning. Turns up. Stocks turn down. Support here. Weakness followed. Support here. We did get a little bit of weakness. Now we're turning back up. The important thing here is this is the three-week exponential moving average and the six-week exponential moving average. Here's where they cross weakness in stocks. Across weakness consolidation. Cross consolidation weakness. Blue over red here, weakness in the S&P 500. Blue over red here, weakness. Last week, as of the close on Friday, blue is above red, 
which is similar to this point here, 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 and here, where weakness in stocks followed. Similar concepts. Again, we're not using indicators here. We're strictly looking at price. Now we're looking at shorting small cap stocks or the Russell 2000 index relative to the S&P 500. When the ratio, the dotted line, is rising, shorting the Russell 2000 is more popular than owning the S&P 500. This is what risk on looks like. Stocks are more popular than shorting small caps. Point of the exercise, these are parallel trend lines. This is a trend channel. When the ratio bounced at the bottom of the channel here, weakness in the S&P 500 followed. When the ratio bounced at the bottom of the channel here, weakness in the S&P 500 followed. We're again bouncing near the bottom of the trend channel. If this ratio continues to rise, it'll look similar to this period here and here where stocks were weak. In this case, we're looking at price. This is IWO, which is small cap growth, which is even more aggressive than IWM. So aggressive small cap growth relative to treasury bonds. This is risk off. This is risk on. Here, hits resistance, turns down the ratio, stocks are weak. Hits resistance here, the ratio turns down, stocks weak. Top of the trend channel here, weakness in the S&P 500. Follow the trend channel up, it appears that we're rolling over here in a similar manner to this point here. If that's the case, then we would expect to see weakness. If we break out here, which is a possibility, that's bullish for the stock market, and it may mean that we're getting ready to take another leg up. We'll keep an open mind, but as this chart sits as of the close on Friday, February 22nd, last week this ratio dropped by over 1%. This is concerning as this was, as this was, and as this was. To give you an idea of how many things we track, these are all charts that we review regularly here that can help us determine where strength is in the market and where weakness is, and more importantly, where relative strength is and where relative weakness is. Now we're looking at EEM, emerging market stocks, which tends to be an aggressive play relative to a defensive play, healthcare. So EEM relative to XLV. When the ratio drops, when emerging markets are weaker than utilities, that tends to be bearish for the stock market. When the ratio falls, not good for stocks. Ratio falls, tends to be bearish for stocks. Here you can see the ratio was trying to hold important support here and here. It appears as if we have decisively broken this support level here. The ratio is falling. This is a bearish breakout. Typically, when the ratio falls, that's not a good sign for the S&P 500 index. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or offer to buy or sell any security or any related financial instruments, nor should any of the content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.